How you doing everybody? Welcome back to the new year. Let's uh, do some more experiments. I'm not going to do any cratering experiments at the time being because I've been getting sediment inside of my chamber and it's actually been hindering the capability of my vacuum pump to pull a good vacuum and I have to change the oil and I see sediments coming out of there and I still have all the jars and I'm still collecting a little bit of sediment. <clears throat> I haven't been doing any uh, sediment experiments or uh, silica experiments I guess. I've been just doing uh, some noble gas plasmas and it's pretty much at the same state that it was before and uh, with that <clears throat> that's what we're going to be doing today is talking about electricity and different gas. I have these five gas tanks here and I figured <laughs> I mean why not just start uh, pumping some of these gases in here in pure form and we'll just kind of look at the differences and everybody else out there can see what's going on with electricity in the different gases. We're going to start off with the noble gases and we'll go, I only have neon, argon, and krypton and that's the order we're going to go in from lightest to heaviest. And then I also will be including nitrogen and oxygen but depending on the length that it takes to put all this together that might be for another time because I really want to get into depth about all the different types of gases that I have and how they affect the uh, the electricity and the electrical current flow in the plasma okay now I did say I had pure gases we we're gonna pump in here but that's not entirely true they're only 99.99 percent .99 pure which doesn't really matter we're going to suggest that they're 100% pure. Now, my vacuum can only pull so much of a vacuum, and that number is going to be measured in negative inches mercury, or negative hg, and we're going to call that number x. But we're going to divide that number by the actual hg, and we won't give them any negative or positive meaning, which we'll just call xa. And so we'll compare the vacuum pressure to the atmospheric pressure by this division ratio in order to get a percentage of the vacuum removed or something like that. I think it should work out. So I'm not entirely sure if this is the right way to gauge pressure and stuff like that. So please correct me on the right way. I know it's out there. All right, there she sits. You see that? inches HG negative 29.38 we just saw but it looks like it's averaging out and we'll go compare that to the barometric pressure all right I'm in Minnesota here we're gonna go for the state average 30.17 HG so we have 29 0.36 for our vacuum pulled and 30.17 for our atmospheric pressure. <clears throat> when we divide this number 29.36 by 30.17 we get 0 0.97315 which we can move this decimal place over twice if we multiply it by 100. Get rid of this 5, and that's 97.31% removed, that we'll say. So unfortunately, we have 3.6% gas still remaining in the chamber. <clears throat> so we can't make incredible assumptions about what we're looking at inside there <clears throat> but we I think it's safe enough we'll be able to see some notable differences <clears throat> and also I do have oxygen and <laughs> I can't spell oxygen and nitrogen which make up most of the atmosphere as well as argon in the atmosphere so we're going to be experimenting with all of those as well and that should help give us a uh, slightly better idea of what we're dealing with here inside of the plasma chamber. Alright, so I got a, an evacuated chamber here. This is 
the magnet to show the effects. Now I'll prep the lines to get ready to add the neon in here. I think I'm actually still pumping a little bit of the gas out there to see the colors. But it was neon that I just put in there on accident. Do a different video. So, open off. Open up neon to full pressure. Close in the vacuum. And we're gonna add. We'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna try and add just a tiny bit of neon. Probably more than ideal to show an extremely low pressure, but we did get some bit of low pressure here. Can go ahead and uh, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, well I am actually doing this. Go ahead and pump out of this neon inside the chamber. It's just to show how neon can have that orange glow here. Probably could be orange. We're going to go ahead and put some back in now. Uh, well, it's totally fluorescent in the bottle. It's pretty cool. Try a little bit of neon. <laughs> Gotta add a little more. See this nice orange glow at the base? Super sweet orange glow when I touch it. Getting a blinking effect from my Tesla coil. You can see, I can see little phalanges kind of uh, appearing in the white, uh, connecting to the main plasma, if you will. Let's go ahead and uh, add a little bit more. a little bit higher pressure slowly add it in there a little bit quicker wasn't even very much filament is increasing I guess so we're still at about 20, negative 27 hg gonna bump it up See some colors forming up here at the top. Some nice pink. Let's try and just unload this pressure into the uh, outside vacuum chamber. Yeah. And it's still open. So now we're gonna go ahead and that was pretty nifty. Doing a very pretty, almost ruby colored. I can't take my eyes off it. It's incredible. And the filament is getting a little bit bigger. There's still a nice diffuse filament here down at the bottom yet. And we're at, we're at negative 20 HG. Seems to be almost be changing. Fairly intense. Uh, the main right arc discharge, I guess you could call it, doesn't seem to be interacting with my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add some. So we'll note that right now we got this diffuse look, and this arc is now forming here at the top, or the very bright filament at the top. And uh, that's at about negative 20 HG, so keep a note of that. One head and unloaded again. Oh, that looks really nice when that goes in there. 
And shame on me, where's my safety glasses? I know what Neon is uh, pretty intense. Alright, so that looks pretty, pretty darn cool. I can now kind of interact with this bright filament here. And we're at about negative 17. Such a fiery orange coming in there. It's very intense brightness. I just went ahead and unloaded the neon tank into the vacuum chamber. Wow, is that something? So now we're almost at atmospheric pressure. Okay, we're now we're above atmospheric pressure. I'm scared. So we just took it to about there. We pulled off my neon tank. Say so that we don't want to go any higher than that. I can see some crazy uh, wiggling. I believe that wiggling is from convecting from heat in the filament. Man, that is something sweet. I can't believe I've done this pressure of neon yet before. Sucking out the neon now. Probably wrecking my vacuum chamber. I don't know, I guess these gases can't be too bad for it. It was just atmospheric pressure of neon. Which we kind of already saw this pressure, so we'll cut this off here and we'll start prepping up for that art. The vacuum chamber is nice and toasty and ready for some argon gas. It pulls off my valves here. Start by adding a very small amount. It's like a very good, very good pull of argon gas. You can definitely see this nice uh, color up here. Go ahead and remove that from the outside. We'll kind of pull this out just to have a look ski as, as it needs. So pretty nice. All right. Let's go ahead and add some more argon in. We're back where we, where we were at. Add a little bit in here, a little bit more. Some things similar to the the eye. Definitely, it was definitely an argon. Two more right here. <laughs> I 
power down. So we're still diffuse at about 25 and a half. Negative 25 and a half. We have a lot of activity at the base. Yeah, similar things uh, to the argon. I mean, to the krypton, sorry. Makes me skeptical. But there's such a different color of filament up here, I don't believe it could be possibly krypton. Let's get mixed. That is true. Very nice discharge. All right, we're at a uh, negative 24. So you can almost note the similarities between argon and krypton until we get to about this phase here. So we're at about negative uh, 22 and a half. You can see some really nice diffuse uh, stuff happening. Along with, of course, the bright discharge. Krypton does not seem to want to form this bright stuff. Uh, neon forms it. I guess at higher pressures, but doesn't want to form that filament there, the bright filament. Add some more argon. So we're at about negative 20 and a half right now. That's a really nice, uh, Nice glowing and nice filaments here. Adding more argon. We had seemingly killed it there. So right now we're at a negative uh, seven, eighteen and a half. It can hardly handle it. We can just uh oh strange. Be able to handle more of it. Ooh, we got some really nice, crazy, intense uh discharges we can get here. Trying to get them to show up on the camera. Let's add a little bit more. Uh that's at uh negative Negative 17 and a half. I'll try and take it down some more. Uh, we're still forming discharges in the bottle. Just under negative 16. It is something cool to touch. You really see the some sort of like ribbony, ribbony discharge. Probably from heat, heat and pressure, I would assume. Let's add some more. It's very nice that we're still able to form the discharge in here. Yeah, under negative 15. 
I'm fairly certain that with Krypton I can't really get it to form in here unless I have an actual electrode outside connected to the inside of the chamber. Unless I'm touching it, Sargon does not want to. It's really cool to look at though. to my vacuum pump for science. <laughs> there you have it, Argon. Oh, that's the best. Very good for this diffuse stuff here. Very good for plasma if you ask me. Very cheap as well. Welding gas. Very nice pinks. We're right about negative 25. Very nice looking. You can form that crazy filament as well as these sweet diffuse things. All right, ready up for uh, Krypton. Our vessel is ready for Krypton. So I'm going to close off our valves. And we just open up the Krypton lines. Let's make sure I get this right. Small amount of Krypton here. Yeah, kind of having a lot. No, actually, not too much. But as you can see, there's these weird thingies uh, on the glass. I feel very uh, tripped out. Try adding a little bit more of it. Crypto. A little bit more crypto. So I can get an arc here. We're at about negative 27. Got these crazy little uh, thingies down here that are just blowing their way up the side of the glass. Very nice in there. Those things when I ran the Tesla for 
business is pretty crazy. Let's try sucking that out, I guess, and see what's going on. Alright, <clears throat> we're gonna suck back to, or we're gonna remove air back to, a, or gas back to a low pressure again. Atmospheric plasma as well. Nice krypton gas in there. So similar to the Argon, we got this pink glow, so that's probably the air that we're seeing in there mixing with the gas, maybe these double loaves or the noble gases, I don't know. Ah. We're going to go ahead and uh, we'll just put the pound back in there again. More Krypton. <clears throat> so you can see what does that word? Krypton. <clears throat> does that want to form the phalanges? Kind of similarly to the uh, or the filaments. <clears throat> Similar to the neon. At uh, negative 26, above negative 26, we're at right now. We are seeing an intense arc discharge, I guess. Occasionally, or, yeah, whatever that is. Let's go in with the Krypton again. Seeing some of the intense discharges of the krypton there. I cannot tell you what pressure this is at. I don't want to let that gauge just go. It's, uh, it's going to be high in there. All right, we're at negative 20, which is unfortunate. Never mind. So it's looking very satisfying in there for sure. A very sweet discharge. Above negative, above negative 20 and a half right now of the Krypton. Loving it. Let's uh, add some more. Tesla coil can barely handle this bad boy. Let's 
So we're at about negative 17 and a half of the Krypton. You can smell the ozone. Very sweet. I can just try to add some more. Time, pretty high pressure here. And removing the Krypton. You can see a little bit of diffuse filaments in there. <clears throat> you definitely make note that the Krypton prefers the bright discharge more than the rest of them. Wow, it's really, it's really nice in here. Pulls it off the Krypton. That was a pretty interesting light show we just saw there. It's almost kind of hard to tell that some of the differences, I mean there was a lot of similarities in the lower pressures. We did see some differences in the higher pressures. We definitely saw a difference that we can make note of where the lighter the gas the higher the pressure discharge we could form where in the neon we were forming discharges in atmospheric pressure in argon we could get about halfway and krypton was less than that even and uh, I'll also note that it's almost seemed that the neon favored more of the diffuse throughout its discharging phases into the higher pressures and uh, krypton was favoring the very bright filaments even early on and not typically wanting to form uh, diffuse filaments like argon or neon and argon of course in my opinion likes to form the best uh, diffuse filaments and so uh, I am gonna cut it off here and we'll uh, get back at it again with some of the other gases added in